Hey all, today I would like to talk about what I consider to be DC's most powerful superhero team, the Doom Patrol. I'm going to be going over the main Doom Patrol members' most impressive and wackiest feats throughout their history. For those of you who are fans of the live action series, I'll also be explaining how the live action series is actually canon to the comics at the end of the video. I'll be covering the feats of the Robot Man, Cliff Steele, Crazy Jane, Rebus the Negative Man, Dorothy Spinner, Rita Farr the Elastic Woman, Hero of the Beach, Flex Mantalo, and the cross-dressing sentient street named Danny. Unfortunately, I have had to crop some of the pages I'll be showing in this video, as they have depictions of nudity and other things I would rather not have on this channel, but this won't affect the actual feats in any way. I think it makes the most sense to start with the Dorothy Spinner, the girl with the power to make things from her imagination real, as many of the other Doom Patrol members scale to things that she ended up creating. Some of Dorothy's imaginary friends might not seem like much at first, but they have been described as archetypal by the chief Niall Skulder, and seem to have their origin within the Dreaming, which is the realm of Dream of the Endless. At one time, Dorothy's mind acted like a revolving door to the astral, allowing a creature known as the Candle Maker to make itself real. However, it quickly found that it was trapped by the strength of Dorothy's mind. The Candle Maker is the personification of the fears of the collective conscious made manifest, and is said to be Robot Man's worst enemy. It refers to itself as the death of all things, and says that the real world is non-existent in comparison to itself. It fights by attacking the seven archetypal souls of a person directly, stripping away each one until there is nothing left but a husk. This effect was even enough to kill one version of Rebus. It was able to destroy the archetypal New York that exists within the Dreaming, and would have destroyed everything in this way if Willoughby Kipling hadn't trapped it there using some kind of magic. Even death itself fears the Candle Maker and it had the power to send Crazy Jane to hell. But without a physical body to anchor itself, the strength of Dorothy's mind was simply too much for it, and she was easily able to defeat it. The surprising willpower Dorothy possesses is often her greatest strength. A metahuman known as the False Memory has the power to implant made-up memories in another person's head, something that was effective even on characters like Robot Man, who have resisted things like this before. Dorothy, however, was unaffected by this power. On another occasion, a realm known as the White City was created by the Builders, the ancient beings responsible for the shaping of creation itself. It pulls you in and has the power to twist your memories, trapping you there with horrible memories and fantasies. Dorothy was able to break herself and Coagula out of this prison using the powers of her imaginary friends. Flex Mentalo is another character created from the mind of Wally Sage and made real. He has the power of muscle mystery. This allows him to flex his muscles producing strange reality altering effects. Using this power he has read minds, looked into the future and seen into other dimensions. He can cloud the minds of others by flexing allowing him to pass by undetected. On one occasion, the hero of the beach flexed for so long that it caused several unusual phenomena, including uncontrollable orgasms, visions of worlds folded into envelopes, new ideas for footwear, bizarre dreams, shattered wine glasses, paintings reversing their colouring, and visions of God. He did all of this in an attempt to flex the Pentagon into a circle, which he was able to accomplish later. Flex was even able to defeat his own creator, Wally Sage, in his own comic, and his powers of muscle mystery were powerful enough to easily combat a retcon corporation altered Lobo. However, his two best abilities, the crossword puzzle and the power of inflation intensity, are unrelated to his power of muscle mystery. The last word on the crossword holds the word of God, and speaking it grants you his power. The power of inflation was even greater, however. It allows Flex to utilize the electromagnetism of endorphins to inflate his body for even greater feats of reality warping. 
With Vixen helping him link the team together, Flex was able to inflate the Justice League of America, the Doom Patrol, and others to save all of reality. This overpowered the effects of Retcon Corporation's ultimate failsafe, which was going to wipe the entire Overvoid clean. Cliff Steele, or Robot Man, is kind of the main character of the Doom Patrol, and has by far the most appearances. He is actually the only member of the Doom Patrol to appear in every volume. However, he rarely gets as many good feats of his own. He was capable of combating extra-dimensional vampires, and could trade blows with the Retcon Corporation in forces. His robot body is obviously stronger than a normal human, but it comes with other advantages. For instance, he can change his own brain chemistry to resist the hallucinogenic effects produced by Mr. Nobody, and was able to automatically search an entire forest using his infrared vision. He can even access and rewatch his own memories just by pressing a few buttons. Frequently, his best asset is his ability to come up with a plan for the Doom Patrol to follow. He was the one that came up with the plan to defeat the Candle Maker by reprogramming the nanomachines that made up the physical body it possessed when Dorothy released it from her mind. With Dorothy herself even saying that no one except Cliff would have been able to come up with the plan. In a similar fashion, he also came up with the plan to stop Niles Calder's world-ending nanobot invasion by reprogramming them with his own brain. The act of doing this completely disintegrated his mind, but even in this state, he was able to recover and reprogram the nanobots. The state of mind he reached from this recovery was even compared to Samadhi, the final step of enlightenment in the Buddhist Eightfold Path. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. I hope I pronounced this next thing correctly as well, and that thing is Teresius. Cliff's two best feats are his transformation into Planet Cliff and his merging with Kate to become a Teresius. Not only is Planet Cliff, well, an entire planet, but it was also capable of killing Flex Mentalo through unknown means. The Teresiae? Teresius is a. No, there's no plural for Teresius. Why? It's literally the name of some guy from Greek mythology. Whatever. The Teresiae? predate God and all of creation, and exist in a realm beyond God and his creation. They are opposed to the Builders, who are the first men that created the rules of creation. It is impossible to defeat the Builders without first destroying all of creation, something that the Teresiae were capable of. It should also be noted that the Builders and the Teresiae are given a very similar description to the character Antagon from Animal Man another comic that was revamped by Grant Morrison, much like the Doom Patrol was. Antagon is described as the dark side of God, and should logically scale to the presence himself, a level of power that wouldn't be inconsistent for the Teresiae. As a Teresius, Cliff should also scale to this. Negative Man, aka Larry Trainer, aka Rebus, aka Positive Man, aka Eleanor Poole, aka Negative Woman, is a man-slash-woman-slash-negative-energy host that gained strange powers after the negative ghost possessed their body. Rebus can unleash power by accessing or releasing the negative spirit from their body. He can transport people into the minds of others, and was the one to, ultimately, shatter the body of the candle maker. After reaching the Kaleidoscape, Rebus was given something called Space Fix, which was an inoculation against diseases created by the Mesh, known as the Silence and Space Plagues. These plagues could destroy words themselves, leaving the world without meaning, and were eventually capable of destroying the concept of space itself, making movement impossible. Space Fix bypasses this, allowing the person injected with it to move in a state of pure mind. The negative spirit itself is able to collapse himself infinitely, folding itself over and over, approaching zero, eventually reaching the negative realm, a place beyond existing and physicality. Rebus was also capable of transporting his physical body and Cliff Steele there. During one story, the Doom Patrol were fighting against a being known as the Decreator. It is the last message to herald the death of all being. It is the Anti-God, 
the shadow of the light created when God spoke his first words. Once it appears, it begins unmaking everything one by one until nothing remains. It can never be stopped, but Crazy Jane was able to come up with a plan to slow it down. Rebus, along with Willoughby Kipling and Crazy Jane, were able to produce counter vibrations that slowed the decreator down to the point where it was destroying things so slowly you would barely notice that it was happening at all. Which leads nicely into the next member of the Dune Patrol, Crazy Jane. Jane has a pretty severe case of multiple personality disorder, except that each of her 64 personalities also have their own superpowers. These tend to be pretty generic, things like mind control or the ability to throw fire, that can come with some interesting stuff too. One of Jane's personalities even seems to turn her into some strange abstract object disconnected from reality. As I mentioned earlier, Jane was able to create counter vibrations to the decreator using her Lucy Fugue personality along with Willoughby Kipling and Rebus. In Gerard Way's Doom Patrol, she was able to transform the disappointment back into Hex along the Star Archer, despite him having the powers of all the god of superheroes at the time. She seems to be able to fly through space unaided, and after realising that she was a comic book character, she reached the peak of her powers, using her otherwise relatively weak art manipulation to manipulate reality itself and return the retcon altered Justice League back to their normal selves. Rita Farr, or Elastigirl, was not with the Doom Patrol for as long as the other members here, but the feats she does have are so impressive I felt the need to include them anyway. For one, she was indirectly the cause of the death of the disappointment when the bullet he fired at her bounced back and hit him. Haxalon, or the disappointment, at the time, had all of the powers of the god of superheroes all. Even Retcon Corporation, a meta-narrative company who have the technology to wipe the entire overvoid clean by pressing a single button, still worship all as some kind of omnipotent deity. This same corporation were able to trap Rita Farr inside of a reality they called a passion play, where she was forced to fulfill the role of some strange space Jesus. It was during this imprisonment that Rita realized the true extent of her powers, however. Instead of just growing her body giant or stretching her limbs, Rita expanded out until she was omnipresent throughout everything that existed, even out to the realm of the Eonymous, a place from where the Overvoid merely seems to be a piece of paper. As a result of this, she was able to avoid the reality reset caused by Flex Mentalo's inflation intensity and step back into the Overvoid after the reset was complete. Danny the Street is the last member I'm going to go over in this video. Danny has been many things at many times. Sometimes a street, sometimes a brick, sometimes an ambulance, but always a crossdresser. Danny can kind of teleport himself to different locations around the world. He was even capable of traveling to other realms, like when he rescued Crazy Jane from Hell or when he transported to Dorothy from the Dreaming back to the real world. Although he tends to appear as a street, Danny is actually an entire infinite world that resides within the Dreaming. Even when Danny was turned into an ambulance, he still contained a theme park inside of him that held a car park of infinite size. Danny was able to hold off and survive an encounter with the Candle Maker when Cliff needed time to perform his plan, and within Danny, exists Danny Comics, from which Danny can make fictional characters real. One such character is Casey Brink. Casey's power is that she always arrives early, and while she is driving Danny, they can easily travel backwards through time, even driving fast enough to smash through the walls of the Overvoid to arrive at Retcon Corporation. At one point, she was even able to drive so fast that the death of Danny in the past did not affect the present Danny, and in a fight against Milkman Man, she was able to avoid being hit by him using this power. Hopefully, now you all understand why I put the Doom Patrol on such a high level. They've taken on creation ending foes like the Builders, the Decreator, and the Candlemaker numerous times, 
and they've performed feats at a level beyond even the Overvoid itself. No other team in DC has anything on this level. And like I said at the beginning of this video, it's all canon to the live action series. During the 2016 Doom Patrol run, we see that Retcon Corporation has given up trying to entertain gods known as the Eonimus. The Eonimus exist only to destroy everything, but hold entertainment above all things, and can be distracted as long as they are kept entertained. With Retcon gone, we see Mr. Nobody take up the position as entertainer of the Eonimus. Here, he has the power to broadcast any form of entertainment he can think of onto the infinite white of the Overvoid for the Eonimus, a representation of the audience, to enjoy. Cut to the live action series and what do we see? A TV show centered around Mr. Nobody getting revenge on his mortal enemies, the Doom Patrol, with himself as the narrator. This seems a little odd when you consider that Mr. Nobody has never actually met the live-action Doom Patrol before, and in fact, he considers them his mortal enemies before they even exist as a team. He also seems to run things in the series from his own white space. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Mr. Nobody repeatedly acknowledges the audience as well, as if he knows what he's doing is just part of a story. Well, on top of this, we get this statement from Mr. Nobody. <laughs> That's ridiculous. A, I am sinister and dark. B, I'm powerful enough to control this entire streaming service if I wanted to. What the fuck is going on? Now, the DC streaming service contains Young Justice, which has been specifically acknowledged as Earth-16 within the comics, which means that Mr. Nobody could directly affect the comics' continuity from where he exists within the white space, making the live action itself a part of the comics continuity. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this excursion into the weird and wacky realm of the Doom Patrol. I've finally decided to make my Discord server more public, so check the pinned comment for a link to that. The next video I have planned is more than likely either going to be a video on the presence or dark side. So subscribe if you want to see that, and otherwise, I will see you all next time. Okay, patrol, spell it out! C -I -E -T